David, where are you? Are you not coming home yet? Sarah, sorry. I'm having drinks with my mates. I'm celebrating my promotion. I'll be home soon. Celebrating your promotion? You're promoted? You didn't tell me. Oh, right. I was going to tell you once I got home. So you didn't know. Yeah, I was told unofficially recently. My career is secured, I guess. Wow, congrats. Thanks. We're celebrating it today, so I'll be home late. Really? But we have a family gathering tomorrow. I'll introduce you to everyone, so you need to be there. Well, yeah. Of course I'll be there. That's good, but we have to leave pretty early in the morning. Are you going to be able to make it after drinking this much? Yeah, yeah. I won't get drunk. Plus, my mates were the ones who asked me out. I wasn't about to say no to them. I get that, but tomorrow's gathering has been scheduled for over a month now. You could have kept that in mind and just said no. Well, don't be upset. These guys will be working for me someday. If I ever want to get another promotion, I need to build up a good relationship with these guys. Tonight could mean a lot for my career. Understand, Sarah? Listen, I'm not against drinking with your folks, but if you have an important event the next day, you should prioritize it, shouldn't you? That's all I'm saying. This is for our life. For our life? Yeah. These guys join my team, work for me. This will make my career, meaning I can support you. And if we're ever to have a family, this is not just for me only. It's for you too. Still, you should prioritize the schedule you already planned, I think. If you say no to their invitation once, it's enough for them to leave you. Doesn't that mean that they never really respected you? What's wrong, Sarah? Don't get upset like that. Why are you so serious? I'm not upset, I'm just worried. I mean, when you first met my parents, you were hungover, remember? At that time, my parents were very upset and we had to go around apologizing a million times. Remember? Yeah, that happened. My uncle, who's been taking good care of me, he's coming tomorrow. If the same thing happens again, we'll be in huge trouble. So don't drink too much and come back home already. Before going to meet your parents, I needed some drinks to relax, you know? You see, meeting your parents made me more anxious than I'd ever been, I should say. This time, it's the extended family, but they are still your family. I'm nervous. So my friends and I will go to a couple more places. And after that, I should be relaxed. And then I'll come home. A couple more places? Are you going to have more drinks? Until what time? You'll miss the train. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm not going to miss the last train. So let me just relax for once. Drinking's the only way for me to forget things. You say for once, but didn't you just grab drinks the other day? No, you've been doing this almost every day. Am I wrong? You sure? Well, yeah. We had to apologize many times. But birthdays of my boss and my mates? I mean, I have to be there. I'm the life of the party, you know. The life of the party, huh? I know quite a lot of places, so people come to me. What can I do? If you go out this often, fine. But please come home early just for today, please. Come on, Sarah. What's wrong? This isn't like you. Tomorrow's a very important day. I know that, but then don't nag me like this for a mistake I already apologized for. It's like I'm talking to your parents. Are you becoming like them? Becoming like them? Of course I'm like them. They're my parents. <laughs> you're right! <laughs> oh my goodness, you're seriously hammered right now. I can't believe you're still out. David, you should have gone home ages ago. Seriously, don't you understand that staying until the last train is just asking for trouble? Can you please, pretty please, just leave now? Oh, come on, Sarah. Give me a break, will you? I'm doing this for my future, okay? Can you wrap your head around that concept? I have goals and aspirations, and I'm working hard to achieve them. It's not like you understand any of this. Getting hitched to someone like you is beyond stressful. So I deserve to blow off some steam and have a few drinks. What's so wrong with that? Are you going to control and take away every little thing that brings me joy? That's not what I'm trying to do here, David. It's not about me taking away your enjoyment. It's just that my parents and I want to welcome you into our family. I'm genuinely concerned that we'll be humiliated yet again if you keep showing up in such a state. I hope you could understand where I'm coming from. Oh boy, here we go again. Fine, fine. I'll catch the last train tonight and make my way home. Happy now? Can you just back off and let me handle things my way? 
Okay, okay, I get it. Sorry to bother you, David. I just wanted what's best for the both of us. I'll see you when you finally decide to make your way home. Sarah, I'm sorry. I missed the last train. You promised me. You promised me you'd catch the last train. Why can't you just keep your promises? I told you. What now? My family made time for our gathering, so it's not going to be rescheduled. I'm leaving at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Can you make it? Oh, yeah. No worries. I have plenty of time. I'll take the first train in the morning. Then I should be able to make it, right? It'll be fine. First thing in the morning? I don't think you'll catch it. I can. Well, just in case, why don't you just come back home now by cab? Well, I paid almost everything tonight, so I wonder if I'll have enough to ride a cab. I don't think so. And I had too much to drink. I'll get sick in a cab. I'll rest somewhere and then head home. I can pay for your ride when you get here. Throwing up in a cab is the most humiliating thing in the world. No cab. Okay. Wait a second. Leaving at 8 a.m., isn't that too early? Are we really supposed to meet up that early? My family members are quite busy. They try hard to keep a schedule for meeting us. And this is the only time that everyone was available. I've tolerated your drinking enough, right? So I'm asking you to be there on time for this one gathering. Okay, okay. Don't get upset, okay? I'm not upset. I'm just uneasy since you didn't come back home. I'm telling you, I'll be home taking the first train in the morning. Trust me. You told me that you'd take the last train home. My bad. The first train in the morning. That's it. Trust me, please. Can you promise me one more time? I mean it, David. Don't be late under any circumstances. I'm doing this for you, you know. Jeez, Sarah, you don't have to keep repeating it. I got the message, okay? I'll make sure not to be late. But hey, you should go to bed now. If you look tired tomorrow, your family and friends might start pointing fingers and say it's all my fault. All right, I'm headed to bed. Just make sure you catch the first train, okay? Yeah, yeah, I promise. I'll even go with one of my mates and spend the entire night drinking so I won't accidentally sleep through the train's arrival. That way, there's no chance of me missing it, right? Oh, come on, David. That's not exactly what I had in mind. But if you're going to be up all night anyway, I guess it's fine. I just really don't want you to drink any more than you already have. All right. Once I'm on the next train, I'll shoot you a text. You'll probably still be sound asleep, so don't worry about replying to it. I just want you to know I'm on my way. Okay, fine. Well then, good night, David. Take care, I'll see you tomorrow. David, it's 6 a.m. already. First train should be running. Are you on it? I thought you texted me. Hey, if you're up, text me. David, are you still sleeping? It's 7 a.m. now. You should be heading home by now. Otherwise, you'll be late. Hey, David, where are you? David! I'm sorry, Sarah. I fell asleep. I might still be drunk now, too. I'm so sorry. I'll hurry to go home. Sarah, are you mad? My bad. I couldn't read your texts. I was gonna wake up. You know that, right? Where are you? Still home? Please be ready with my clothes and we can leave right away. Sarah, text me back. Forget about it. I'm on my way. I'm sorry. I woke up at 6.30 once. I did, really. But I fell back asleep. I'm hurrying up now. I hope I can make it. No, I will make it in time. No need. Huh? You don't have to come. Oh, don't say such a thing. I'll be quick. No, have another drink. Enjoy the day. Who is going to drink this early in the morning? Come on, don't be mad like that. We could still meet your family. If we argue, they'll wonder if we're like this all the time. Oh, you say things like that now, but you didn't get home on time. Nope, you didn't even bother. You don't have to come. I don't need you. Hey, watch your mouth. Fine. If you say so, I won't come. It's just a family gathering. You could have just showed up by yourself from the beginning. David, I can't stay with someone who keeps breaking promises like this. What are you saying all of a sudden? I want to call off our engagement. What are you saying? Why is your family talking you into this? No. I was determined to break up with you. If you didn't come back home as you promised. 
What? I packed up all my stuff yesterday. I moved out of our apartment already. Hey, you can't be serious, Sarah. I'm serious. At today's gathering, I'll tell everyone about this broken engagement. Stop kidding. Sure, that'll get everyone's attention, but they'll just be shocked. No one's gonna laugh at your joke. It's not a joke, so they don't need to laugh. Surely they'll be surprised, but they'll understand knowing you. Seriously? How can I joke about something like this? You're right. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. This will not happen again. Yeah? Forgive me. I was just drunk, you know? Today was an important day. I told you many times. I feel bad. I apologized, and we've met your parents. It's not easy now to break the engagement. It would be so embarrassing. Keep your temper. Right, Sarah? I can't. I've tolerated you enough. You've abused me mentally. You've cheated on me many times. And every time I've thought of breaking up with you. But then you apologize to me crying, so I forgive you. But I'm stopping it now. I was not good at forgiving you. So I'll bear the shame in that. But I've made up my mind. I can't stay with you. This is over. Even if I apologize this much? Yes, I can't do this. Oh my god. Enough. Don't get cocky. I'm apologizing, and you cross the line. A family gathering like that is just an informal thing for old geezers. Why do I even have to go to such a thing anyways? I get nervous. It's tiring, and I have to fake a smile. I don't want to go. You can imagine. For you, it's your family. But for me, these guys are nobody. Your family is nothing to me. Can't you see? You could have been thoughtful about things like this. I attended all your family's gatherings, all of them, and I never complained. And I was never late. Am I wrong? They are no one to me, but I faked a smile to act like your ideal wife. You know, Sarah, it's a woman's job to give the man what he wants. That's your purpose, right? Wait, hold on a second. Are you being serious right now? You can't honestly believe that, can you? Well, all the women around me seem to behave that way. It's only you who has ever complained about it. Maybe it's time for you to grow up and see things differently. I can't believe what I'm hearing. If that's truly how you view relationships and women's roles, then I don't think I can marry you. Fine. Have it your way. I'll find someone else to replace you easily. Don't worry about me, Sarah. You'll regret this stupid decision you're making. Breaking up with me just after I got promoted. Don't think you can come crawling back to me when I'm rich and successful. When I'm even further promoted and famous, everyone will be watching. So don't even think about stalking me or threatening me to start over with you. I won't be able to deal with it. Just remember, Sarah, fame changes things. Bye-bye. Sarah, it's been a while. It's me. Can we talk? Well, I hurt you very much, and I'm sorry about it. I truly am sorry, so can we get back together, please? You're all that I have. I realized. Please, Sarah, reply to me. What? We broke up. Broken engagement. You know what that means. It's too late to apologize. Now back off. Besides, I thought you wouldn't want to get back together with me. I'm so sorry. I had no idea that you were the niece of the CEO. Yeah. The CEO announced my demotion today, and I'll be sent to a remote office. And? Uh, I asked for a reason, and he told me that you're his niece, and I said something bad to you. Well, it's true, isn't it? And I've told you many times my uncle, who's very important to me, was coming. So you better be there. And still, you chose not to come. Why didn't you tell me that the CEO is your uncle? If I knew, I wouldn't have gone out for a single drink. I would have attended. I'd be there no matter what. Bullshit! If you knew I was related to the CEO, you wouldn't go drinking? You'd attend the gathering? Of course. Of course I put you at the top of the list if I knew. How could you not tell me? Well, my uncle and aunt have no children. They couldn't have one. But they liked taking care of kids. And after I was born, they treated me like their own child. They were there for me during everything. And they didn't miss it to celebrate any occasion, even though they were so busy. And when my uncle found out that I was getting married to one of his employees, 
He was happy and he promoted you. I didn't know. I thought this was on my results. My uncle likes surprising people. He told me not to tell you because he wanted to surprise you at the gathering, so that's why I didn't tell you. Oh boy. But you didn't show up at the gathering, of course. I told everyone the reason why. You. How could you? I told them about the engagement, about the mental abuses, and about cheating all of them. And they listened to me. I could barely breathe. I was so emotional at the end, but everyone stayed by my side. Of course, my uncle too. He was very mad and said that he was ashamed and that he appointed you to take the lead. He regretted promoting you. And then I showed him all of our texts crying. What? All of them? Yes, I did, all of them. And then my uncle was getting ready to punish you, send you to work on a remote island. No way. Sarah, please, I'll change. You'll change? Why? Why? Because I want to start over with you. I'm asking. It was my fault that I ignored you and went for drinks. You have nothing to be blamed for. Okay. And what do you want me to do? Can you call your uncle and tell him that I'll be different and that I'll take care of you and that I should keep my promotion because we're getting back together? Please. I still love you. It's true. Believe me. So please ask him not to punish me. That's what you want. You don't care about my feelings. No, that's not true. I love you. You wouldn't be able to get a promotion without me. How funny. I'm begging. I'll change if you want. I'll kneel down to apologize. Please come back to me. I could do this for you. From now on, it'll be different. And you'll be my top priority. And I'll listen to you alone. Please. Be different, you say. But can you really be so different from now on? That's really something that can be so different this easily. Maybe you don't remember all the other times that you said you'd be different and failed, since you're so different now. Sarah, I am not bullshitting you. My life depends on this. Help me. You know you love me. Come on. Love? No, I don't love you. I've had enough. Really, why did I even get engaged to someone like you? I regret it. It's so over between us. I won't be talking to my uncle to help you. Never. It doesn't matter. Maybe you'll find a better girl on that island. Sarah, please, I'm begging you. I can't bear the thought of losing you. I know I've made mistakes, and I'm truly sorry for the pain I've caused you. I never meant to hurt you, and I hate myself for the choices I've made. Can we please just sit down and talk about this? I want to hear your side, your feelings, and I want to express my remorse and commitment to change. David, it's hard for me to even consider trusting you again after everything that happened. The mental abuse, the cheating, they've left deep scars, and it's gonna take more than just words to heal them. I don't know if I could believe in your promises anymore. I understand why you feel that way, Sarah. I can't blame you for doubting me, but I want you to know that I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make things right. I'm ready to face the consequences of my actions. If it means compensating you for the pain and suffering, I'll do it without hesitation. I just want a chance to show you that I can change. Please don't give up on us. It's not just about compensation, David. It's about the emotional damage and the trust that's been shattered. Money can't fix that. I need to see genuine remorse, consistent effort, and a true commitment to change. Can you promise me that you'll do the work necessary to rebuild what we've lost? Sarah, I promise you with every ounce of my being that I will do everything in my power to make things right. I'll seek therapy, attend counseling sessions, and put in the hard work to address the issues that led to my hurtful behavior. I'll be transparent, open, and honest with you. I'll earn back your trust, step by step, day by day. Please give me a chance to prove myself to you. David, I want to believe you. I want to believe that people can change and that we can overcome this, but I need time to heal and process everything. I need to see consistent actions that align with your words. I can't make any promises right now, but I'm willing to consider the possibility of giving us another chance if you're truly committed to change. Thank you, Sarah. I understand that rebuilding trust takes time, patience, and effort. I'm willing to wait, to be patient, and to prove to you that I'm serious about making amends. I love you more than anything, and I'll do whatever it takes to make things right between us. Please, don't give up on us just yet. 
Let's take it one day at a time. And with your guidance, I'll become the person you deserve. I appreciate your sincerity, David. This is not a decision I can make lightly, and it'll take time for me to heal and regain trust. I don't want to make any false promises or rush into anything. Let's take it slow and see if we can rebuild what was broken. Just know that my heart is still hurting and I really need time to process everything. After that, David found himself relocated to a small office on a remote island where only a handful of people lived. It was a disappointing turn of events for him, and the isolation only made things worse. He sank deeper in his addiction to drinking, seeking solace in the bottle. The friends who used to accompany him in his drinking escapades didn't follow him to this new location, leaving David to drown in his own sorrows. The office itself, though, small and tucked away on a remote island, still belonged to my uncle's company. This meant that David had to be on his best behavior at all times. If business wasn't going well, or if someone complained about him, he knew that even more severe punishment awaited him. It was a constant pressure that hung over him, leaving no room for relaxation or indulging in those little drinking parties that he used to be a part of his regular life. As for me, after the breakup with David, I found solace in the company of a kind of gentleman whom my uncle introduced me to. He was a stark contrast to David in every way. He was reliable and kept his promises. Unlike the broken promises I'd grown accustomed to, he had no interest in alcohol and he was content with his position having joined the company to challenge himself rather than seeking promotions. People at the company respected him greatly due to his strong work ethic and integrity. I tried to convince him to go out with his colleagues to socialize and have a drink or two, but he always preferred staying home. He rarely ventured out. But whenever I shared my excitement about restaurants I saw on TV, he would gladly take me there, showing that he cared about my happiness. And so I find myself finally living a happy life with someone who genuinely cares about me. It's a refreshing change from the tumultuous relationship I had with David. With my new partner, I feel loved, respected, and supported. It's a stark contrast to the uncertainty and emotional roller coaster that characterized my time with David. I'm grateful for the stability and happiness I found, and I look forward to building a future together.